Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to create a form. So what I'm gonna create is called a front end, right? It's the first screen that you see, it's where all the fields are that you write to, and then we save that data to somewhere. And to do that, I'm gonna use Microsoft Power Apps. Okay, so this is Power Apps, and if you can't find Power Apps, go to Office 365, Find the little waffle menu in the top left, select it, and then choose Power Apps here so you can see Power Apps. If you can't find Power Apps here, you can always go to Explore All Your Apps, and then you can see the tab there. In this top center part right here, this is Microsoft's Copilot or their AI tool that will create apps for you. If you use their AI tool, you do have to pay premium licenses because it's gonna write to a data source that's called Dataverse. So number one, that's premium licenses for Power Apps. And when I say premium, that means every user and every developer that uses your app has to pay for the premium license model, uh, which is I think about $20 per user, but we're not gonna go into licenses today. Now, on the left side, we can go to create and you can see some of the different data sources that we have. So we have a blank app, Dataverse, so there's the premium. SharePoint is not premium, so with Office, some Office 365 licenses, you can write to SharePoint, same with Excel, and SQL is gonna be premium, but I believe SQL is the most secure and it's a real database. Uh, I really like developing in SQL, but there's costs with that. And then right here, you can start developing from an image, right? You can draw out what your app looks like, or you can use this tool here called Figma, which will also help you map out what your form looks like. So I'm gonna start with a blank app. Now, just because we start with a blank app doesn't mean we have to have a data source, right? You don't have to have a data source in your Power App. You can send an email with your Power App. You know, you can write to Facebook. And here are different options that appear, right? So right here, blank app based on Dataverse, premium, Power Pages, website. So this is website development. Once again, this is gonna be another premium cost feature. I normally work in the blank Canvas app. Now when I choose a format, I almost never go phone. I would say I used to choose a phone app sometimes, but now I would say 99% of the time I would never use format phone because I can make a tablet app responsive. So when it shrinks, it fits the size of your phone. So I almost always start with tablet. We're going to create a form and let's say what should this form be? We're, let's create a form, something fun. Let's create one for the holidays. So maybe a holiday uh, lunch. Holiday lunch, right? So we're going to create a form for people to enter in to bring their food, you know, how many guests they have and things like that. Okay, so in Power Apps, when you're developing a form, you always have to think if you want people to go back and edit. That's where you'll add more complexity to your Power App if people have to go back and edit. If you use Microsoft Forms, right? Microsoft Forms here, there's no editing. It makes your Power App easier. So my first thought is, do I want people to be able to go back and edit their old uh, option? Or maybe if you have to do an edit, you change it in the data source. That's, that's an option, maybe an admin can go do that. I'm going to make a form and you're not allowed to edit. Editing, we're not gonna allow that. Okay, so let me repeat myself. So step one, we're gonna decide a data source. Where is our data gonna live? If it's going to live anywhere. Number two, we're gonna decide if we wanna go back and edit, right? So that's the second thing I think about. Now, number three, there are two major ways to do forms. Now, there is the out of the box way, which you just come in here and you type in a form and you get the out-of-the-box form from Power Apps. And the other way, which will take you a little bit more work, is to do each piece by yourself. So you will insert the text boxes by yourself individually. So each text box, this gives you more control over your app if you want more customization. The other way, if we just do a form, we are not going to be able to customize as much the way it looks, but it's gonna be way easier to write that form. Now, now that we thought about, okay, the form, let's talk about modern and what's called classic. So right now, it's December 2023, we are in the classic version of the components of Power Apps. Microsoft did recommend to me that we start building modern. And the reason is, is there's not gonna be an easy button to convert 
to modern, right? You're not going to be able to just convert the look and feel to modern. So if you go to settings and you scroll down to upcoming features, it's one down here, maybe like the fifth down here. Let's see, modern controls. You can see that you've even added a little um, note that I didn't see before. Some modern controls are now generally available. The opt-in setting will be removed under the general tab later this year. So I'm assuming that's next year, 2024, uh, because it's December 2023. So I'm going to turn this on. So notice that warning. Microsoft is recommending that you build modern. All right, so we're going to turn that on. Now when I do insert, I have modern and I have classic up here. You see that? Modern and classic. So my recommendation is to build in modern. Now all of the properties are not there. So let's say we went to a text box. Let's say we have a text input here and let's do a classic text input. Now the downside to modern right now is you see all these properties that you have on the right side. Now check out modern. It's a lot less properties. All that information is not there. They even put a little um, note here. This is a modern control. Properties may differ, differ from classic controls. A lot of the properties are not there. The way you do things changes, the way choice fields works. There, there's a little bit of difference between classic and modern. Okay, so for this video, we're gonna do a form with no editing. So we're not gonna be able to see previous edits. Maybe we'll make a view of everything, but we're not gonna be able to edit. And for the data source, I'm gonna use SharePoint. That's my go-to, that's where I started. SharePoint, I'm gonna create a SharePoint list. All right, so I'm in SharePoint on a brand new site. I'm gonna create a list. Now it doesn't have to be a list, right? You could do a document library and store documents there. I'm gonna do a list. So for me, I just go to site contents, new list. And I'm gonna create a blank list and this is gonna show up in Power Apps. And we'll call this, you know, um, what to bring. And so I'll, I'll name it list, right? So what to bring list. I would, you know, don't name list. And you notice there's no spaces. I don't add spaces yet, but from my experience, don't add spaces yet. You can always come back in here and now add the spaces, right? Now you can come back in here, add the spaces as you want after it saves that first initial. I can go into the detail about that, but just trust me. So we'll just keep this simple form, name, food, guess. All right, so now we're back in Power Apps. So now we need to tell Power Apps how to connect to our data, right? So there's two ways we can do it. We can insert a form, so if we went to modern and we inserted a form, you can actually connect data right here. And then it will ask you to add data or you can come over here on the right side. There's multiple places to do this. You can create a table, you can go to your connectors. For me, what I normally do is I come to the left side over here in this cylinder, which is data. And I click add data and I search for SharePoint. That's where our data lives for now. And we're gonna connect to that new site. I have the URL here. I copied it. I have that new site. It's my holiday site. I'm going to connect to that. And then you can see the name of my list here. And now it has the spaces. What to bring. And I will connect. All right, so we connected to that data source. Now here's that out of the box form I was showing you. You can come up here to the top right and click on your, the data source and it's going to populate your form automatically. So boom, Almost all your work is almost done. Normally I get rid of attachments. Uh, sometimes you may want attachments, but for this one, I don't want attachments. Now when I press play, you're not gonna see anything because it's starting off in edit mode. And since we're not gonna do any editing, I'm just gonna go straight on the default mode to new and click play. Now we have our fields, title, food, and we have our options and then guess. So we have a very simple form. You can create more if you want to. Okay, so we'll pull this down and maybe at the top of your form, you want some kind of notes. Like you, let's say we insert a text. Welcome to uh, your company holiday party. Now you notice that I, I wrote it on the right side. You can also write it in the top FX formula up here. So this FX, think of it like Excel. You notice the double quotes and then the double quotes. And then you can write more information in here. You can only bring up to three guests total. 
please identify the food food item you would like to bring. Thanks, you know, Andrew Hess. You know, maybe you want some kind of information in there on your form. I'm sure you guys can create something much prettier than I can, can but for this video, I'm just gonna keep it nice, basic, and simple. Now, I'm just gonna create a, grab a simple picture. I'm just gonna grab a simple picture that I'm gonna AI generate. I'm gonna put it on the background of my form. I like the simplistic. I don't want total green background. I'm gonna take this one right here. This is the image that I'm going to use for my background. Okay, so on the right side, we can go to background image and then add a file, add that image for our background. All right, so you can see the image here. Uh, the text doesn't show up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a classic. I'm just gonna add a rectangle in here and I'm gonna put it over top of my text, just like that. And I'm gonna make it a color, maybe of a white. And then I'm gonna send it to the back. Reorder, send to the back. Okay, maybe we'll change some of the text. So I have my shape, maybe I'll pull it down here, just a little bit further so we can see the form. Um, it doesn't look that great. You can make it look great. Like you can add shadows in here. One option actually is to insert a container instead. So let me show you that I added the rectangle. Let me show you another option. So if we insert a container and this is classic right now, we can do a, just a regular container. We can add it in here, pull it in, uh, change the color to that green. We're going to send the container to the back reorder send to the back but what's really nice is the functionality is this drop shadow we can add a shadow to it maybe bold extra bold so now our container has a nice shadow to it and you can see that there maybe we'll add a border too so we'll have a black border a shadow that that's looking better than what it was looking before Okay, so we have now our basic form. Um, we could make this so it works on the cell phone if we want, but we're not gonna go into that today. So we have our basic form. We can select items. We can add guests. Maybe guest doesn't make sense, but it made sense in our data source. We'll change the text here. So in order to change the text, you have to go to advanced and unlock change properties. And we'll just say number of guests, number of guests. So now we've changed that. Uh, let's, since we used a basic form, let's put in a button, insert a button, and this button is going to save. So this button will save. And for the button, we will just say, this is where you do the, the button click. So when you do the button click on the button, it's called on select. So I've highlighted the button. I'm going to go to the left side on select. And I'm going to change this to submit form form. And it looks like mine is named form two. So if you come to the left side, you can see the name is form two. So I would suggest renaming these things. So if I rename it here and name it form uh, guest form, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. But if you rename it and then you go back to your equation, it does automatically rename it in your equation. That's huge. So you don't have to go back and re-edit that everywhere. So literally that fast, we now have a form. And if we were to press play and fill it out, uh, Andrew Hess, I will bring a dessert, right? And I'm gonna have three guests, a total of three. And I hit save. Literally, we have now already written to SharePoint. So if we go back to SharePoint and if we look at our form, we have written that we have a dessert with three guests. So that easily we've created a form. And on the save button, maybe we want to go back to new form. New form, form guest, form. So that's an, another new command. So now let's try another one. So we can say Dwayne, and he's going to bring an entree, and he also has three guests. So now when we hit save, we stay in that new form mode. So that second option right there is submit form, then new form. And this is the basics for creating a form. 
Now we can do all kinds of other things with Power Apps. We can have this routed through email. We can collect the data. We can check out the data here. So now we can see that Andrew Hess, dessert, Dwayne has an entree. And so we can see that there. If we wanna view that data, maybe we will have it down here. We're gonna insert a gallery. So let's see, gallery. It's not modern yet, so we have to go to classic. We're gonna do a vertical gallery and we're gonna to connect to that same data source. Now you notice you can kind of start to see it, but we can see Andrew Hess and Dwayne have a few options in there. We're just gonna make it nice and small. And I'm gonna change the format of this gallery right here, the layout. I'm just gonna say it's the title and subtitle. I'm gonna delete a lot of the out of the box stuff. So I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete this rectangle also. And I'm gonna delete the next arrow. And now I'm gonna click on the first row here. I'm gonna make it super small, a lot smaller. I'm gonna pull up the dessert, pull up my name so we can start to see some things. So this is the very basics of Power Apps. This is where the bread and butter is, is creating the front end, the form. As long as you keep things simple, you can literally have a form up and running in less than 30 minutes. I think this form right here could be done in less than 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, maybe 15 to 20 minutes for someone who's really, really quick with this. We AI generated the images. We have our nice form. It looks great. We can now share this with our coworkers. So up here at the top, we can just hit publish and then we can share, share it with our coworkers. There's not gonna be any extra premium features to this app. So I just wanted to go over the basics again of Power Apps and form building and to get all of you uh, writing uh, forms too. There's so much more we can do here. We could change number of guests into a slider. We can change drop downs into list views. We can change, you know, all kinds of things. We have a lot more control using Power Apps than Microsoft Forms. So, but think about that. Do you wanna start with Forms? Do we go Power Apps or do you want actual development? These are the steps that you need to think about when you're creating. So thank you all for watching. This was the basics again. My name is Andrew Hess. If you want to learn more, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next week.